60 feet. Should we make it look easy? It is easy. Today we're going to have a look at a couple of slingshots. Uh, the first one is this uh, Hathcock Target Sniper from Bill Hayes at Pocket Predator. And the other one is the Simple Shot, uh, it's from SimpleShot.com, the Flippin' Out Scout, and this is a uh, Generation 2. I don't have an older one to show you, and there isn't a lot of difference between them anyway. But in any case, uh, we're going to contrast and compare these two slingshots just a little bit today. But this isn't going to be exactly like my other this versus that videos, you know, with the tarps and saws and things that I've done in the past. Um, these are both, you know, interesting devices, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference in the buying experience and, uh, you know, my experience with them so far, and these are both pretty new to me. Now, to uh, get this out of the way right up front, uh, this is all kind of a novice perspective. Um, I am not new to slingshots. I've had, you know, when I was maybe seven or eight years old. My dad made me one out of a poplar fork. When I was about 12 years old, I made myself one out of a, out of a black walnut fork uh, that uh, we visited an uncle of mine in Missouri, and I picked up a fork and brought it home, and I ended up making a pretty nice slingshot out of that. Uh, when I was a little bit older, I had uh, a couple of uh, wrist rockets and then a pocket rocket, the one that folds up. You can slip it in your back pocket. And on and off throughout my life, I've had a slingshot handy. Um, I am not a slingshot expert by any means, so this really is kind of a novice perspective. It's only recently that I decided I was interested in some of these modern slingshots with flat bands and, and you know, that they're just interesting devices to me. So this is kind of a novice perspective. And while we're at that, the reason I chose these two to talk about is that I think if you, uh, uh, specifically, if you're using YouTube to get this sort of information, if you're thinking, hey, you know, I might want to put a slingshot in my, in my get home bag, or I might want to put a slingshot in my bug out bag, or, you know, maybe one of these devices could help me procure protein in a bad situation. You know, those kind of topics in the survivalist forums and bushcraft forums and etc. If you were relying on YouTube, I think it's really likely that you're going to end up guided to one of these two slingshots. Um, let's talk just a little bit about these after we see some footage of some shooting. All right. Okay, we're going to go out here to 100 feet. I don't know if I can hit that at 100 feet or not. Um, I'd like to, but let's see what happens here. That was awfully low. I was a little left. Oh, a little high to the right, overcompensated. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's it. We're done. Uh, well, you know what? Since I did it with that slingshot, maybe I ought to try it with the other one. Want me to go to? Here, let's just go out to 100 feet with this one. I've only got about three lead balls left in my pocket, so if I miss them, I miss them. Oh, 
Yeah, I got it with that one too. So 100 feet took me what four or five shots a piece to get zeroed in. I am uh, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Oops. Okay, now you've seen some footage of me doing a little bit of shooting today. And, um, you know, and I, I want to get to some of the conclusions about these devices that I've come to as a novice, anyway. And, and again, you know, I'm not completely unfamiliar with slingshots. I've just only recently decided to try out some modern designs. Um, yeah, so can you use one of these for protein procurement you know could you kill a duck with one yep you betcha could you kill a rabbit with one of these oh yeah yeah no yep, no problem if you're a good shot uh, I have personally killed quite a number of field mice in the last few months and uh, uh, I don't know a dozen 15 gophers uh, and you in the toward the eastern part of the United States you might call those ground squirrels but out here in the west we call them gophers they're a little bit smaller than than a groundhog or a little bit smaller than a prairie dog actually and uh, they're they're a ground squirrel they're a gopher I've I've hunted those and been successful killing them with both of these slingshots uh, I have not hunted any red squirrels gray squirrels anything like that we don't have that many of those around here and and really none of them around where I live anyway so you know there's some in town and whatnot but I don't care about them and I don't intend to eat them uh, gophers are just a varmint here. We just kill them to kill them because they're they're dangerous to other animals. They dig holes in the ground, and you know a horse will break a leg or or a cow will break a leg. We we have to get rid of those, so we manage those populations deliberately out here in the West. Um, so yeah yeah I've done in a bunch of gophers uh, several for each of these I've done in a bunch of field mice several for each of these and yeah you betcha these will kill a rabbit you know you hit a rabbit in the head 
uh, especially with these, you know, I'm going to say that I don't think I'd take a shot at a rabbit with this single layer uh, uh, band on here with, you know, this doesn't chuck big lead very well. Uh, the, the bands don't. Now I've had heavier bands on here. I've had doubled over Linitex, or not Linitex, but uh, uh, doubled TheraBand on here, and I've had doubled Latex on here. And uh, I also had some uh, tapered bands on here for a while, and I've shot some loop tubes on here that all of those that I tried, you know, could chuck a 44 caliber lead ball at pretty good velocity. I don't think I'd have hesitated to try a headshot on a rabbit with any of those heavier bands. The bands we ran today on here are not appropriate. Uh, that would be, you know, you're just going to hurt them, and, and we don't want to hurt any animals. That's, that's you know, you got to be responsible. you got to respect those critters. If you're going to take them for food, you have to respect the fact that that's life you know that so in any case I'm not going to get too deep into that that's just the reality of being a hunter you have to respect the critters you hunt and uh, I would not uh, take that shot with these bands these will kill a gopher though um, I killed a couple of gophers yesterday with these bands and and they did really well so yes yes these are appropriate for um, uh, protein procurement. This is something that, yes, indeed, you could put one of these in your bug out bag or in your get home bag or, or in your woodsman kit. And yeah, you can get birds, pigeons, doves, uh, something even as big as a duck. Yeah, you betcha. You betcha. You can procure protein with these. Um, as to the differences, uh, let's, let's get these both close up in the camera here. Um, as you can see, while the forks on the Hathcock Target Sniper are deeper, they're only just slightly wider, about a quarter of an inch wider. These both have very generous forks. Uh, the material that these are made out of, uh, you know, really durable, strong, you know, this is some sort of a ballistic resin, and this is some sort of an injection molded, maybe fiberglass reinforced kind of stuff. Uh, pretty indestructible stuff on both of them. Um, the flipping out Scout has these uh, has these cool attachment points that just take a, a Phillips head screw here. You know, you loosen that up and this clip comes loose and you can just stick your band in there and then tighten it down. These are called flip clips and boy are they easy. Uh, they make band changes just, you know, a, a matter of less than a minute to change your bands. That's really cool. I like that. Um, you know, when I was doing my due diligence on this purchase, a lot of people said, oh, buy a, buy a second set of those flip clips in case you break one and you might strip one out and this that the other thing um, the fact of the matter is these are a universal fork just like a lot of other slingshots you can tie your bands on here so you know do you want to carry an extra set of these clips in the field yeah you don't have to uh, learn to tie your bands you know I, I'm that's a uh, that's something I've come to that conclusion and I did back when I was uh, running you know wooden forks when I was a kid uh, you should know how to tie your bands on uh, you know relying on you know these clips I don't know they work cool I haven't had any problems with them yet uh, other people I've seen in forums and whatnot say that they've broken one or two of them you know four kits this that the other uh, I don't know they're cool and they're fast I'm using them but if I were to break one of these in the field and I'd just tie my bands on you know I'd just tie them on just like normal um, this doesn't seem to have any sort of an option to, uh, you know, he's got some cool, like this sort of thing with the clips. I forgot what he calls his. They're like alien clips or something like that. They don't fit the Hathcock Target Sniper. Um, they aren't appropriate for this exact slingshot. Um, okay. So, you know, you have to tie your bands on on this one. Now I'm going to say some things about that. I'm going to offer you a tip right here. If you buy this slingshot, uh, tying your bands on, do a wrap or two with your tie before you lay your band on the tie and then finish wrapping it and tuck it under. Uh, 
this the paint job on this or whatever the surface is is pretty slippery I had some trouble with the bands that came on this um, they were cut too long for my draw and I, I pulled the bands and and cut them a little shorter down to about seven half inches from the nine inches that I think that they were uh, yeah, I had some real difficulty tying the bands on the first couple tries, and I ended up pulling the band through the ties a couple times, and I tore that band. So I never even got one shot out of the bands, the, and that was TheraBand Gold. It was nice, wide TheraBand Gold that came on this. I never even took one shot with, with the band that came on this before I destroyed it. Uh, that was my own not really understanding what was going on. Uh, but uh, that's a tip. I'm offering that as a tip. Now, purchasing these. Here's the other thing that's... Uh, that, all right. If you buy a slingshot from Simple Shot, like this Scout or most of their other stuff, you're going to have it in three or four days. It's, uh, they pop it right in the mail. It's ready to go. You're going to have it in three or four days, and that's very cool. If you buy this particular slingshot from Bill Hayes at Pocket Predator, it's going to take him a month to even get it made. Uh, you need to know that up front because a lot of people end up complaining about that. Um, I, I've seen complaints in those slingshot forums. I've seen a couple of videos where people complained about that. Know what you're getting into. Know that you're in for a wait because he is actually going to make this for you. This isn't something that he's got 200 of them sitting out in the shed and he'll just go grab one and throw it in the mail. He has to make this for you when, you know, you order it. Um, so, you know, and he sells a lot of other slingshots. He's got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, mine took about six weeks to get to me. Um, and they don't communicate all that well. Um, this, is, uh, this is legit. This is, this is worth mentioning that, you know, after you've ordered this slingshot, if you're curious about what's going on or, and you email them, you're probably not going to hear anything back. Uh, that was my experience, and I've heard other people say that. This is, this is a nice fellow and his lovely bride who are just the two of them running this business, and you know what? They're not great communicators. Um, Here's That's what I think the about these two slingshots. Um, boy, this one is so fun to shoot. <laughs> I just, I really enjoy shooting this a little more than I enjoy shooting this uh, with target bands on it. Uh, when heavier bands are on this, even though this swell here, you know, does a really good job, and and you know, this is the kind of you know, I, I shoot this kind of a modified pinch grip. I, I use a, a thumb support plus an index finger support. It's kind of a modified pinch. Uh, yeah, this stands out for my hand. And with lighter bands on this, this is the funnest, most accurate. I, it's, it's a blast. It's so easy to get in good practice with this. It's so easy to start hitting stuff. It's so easy to start getting on target with this and understanding how, you know, a modern set of forks behaves. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Once we start getting heavier bands on this, I have a little trouble with it. Now, I, again, this is a novice perspective. I'm not an expert, uh, but the heavier the bands, the more pressure is on my index finger, the more pressure is on my thumb, the harder it is to keep for me to keep it perpendicular. Uh, yeah, it's hard to be it's harder for me to be accurate with heavier bands on this. This slingshot, okay, big complaint that everybody, you know, if you're researching this slingshot, people are going to say, oh, well, it's so dang big, it doesn't fit my hand all that well, and boy, you must have to be a giant to use this. Uh, all right, so um, these days, I wear, you know, a large size glove. When, uh, when gloves were made in America, and, and now they're not, try to find an American-made glove, I wore, uh, I wore a medium you know, that was, uh, I don't have giant hands. They aren't big ham fists, you know. I, I've got a pretty normal sized hand, but I have to wear a large size made in China or made in Korea glove. Um, 
That's just the best I can do to describe the size of my hands. I do wear a large glove, but I didn't used to. When gloves were made in America, I wore a medium. Um, all right, so you put a heavier band on this, and you've got these finger grooves and, and this, uh, I don't know what to call this, the place for your thumb. When you have a heavier band on this and start pulling back on this, this locks in to those grooves. It just, it flattens your hand out and it keeps your wrist in a neutral position. You, it just stays neutral the whole time. Oh, and I just noticed that I, uh, I split a band today. So that's good to know. See if we can see that on the tip of my finger there. Uh, so I have to change these bands, which is good news. I'm not going to stretch it anymore on camera because I'll whack myself in the face with it. Um, but in any case, that, uh, that spreading your fingers out in these finger grooves and this uh, slot for your thumb here, when you start putting a bunch of pressure back on this, it just tightens into your fingers. This slingshot is a lot easier to shoot heavier bands on. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about this little notch in the top and you're supposed to aim with this and I don't find that to be the most important feature. Although it's nice, you know, it does give you a, you know, if, you, if you've ever, you know, shot old rifles, um, you know, that's, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like looking down a buckhorn, although kind of backwards, but still, you know, it's a very familiar method of sighting. People think that that's cool and, you know, that's what Bill Hayes is marketing when he tells you about this um, but honestly it's that pressure it's as this as this pressure comes back into your hand it just sucks in between your fingers tighter and tighter and your your wrist is able to stay completely neutral I think that this slingshot is more appropriate for heavier bands uh, you know again novice perspective all right way more fun to shoot easier to get accurate with uh feels just great man that just fits so nice i you know it it's uh, a narrower grip it's very comfortable for long shooting sessions and you know, i should have said that when i was talking about this that you know long shooting sessions this thing is spreading your hand out you know uh, hundreds of shots, yeah, uh, this is a lot more fun to shoot hundreds of shots through than this set of forks. Uh, it, this will get uncomfortable after a while, and that's just the truth. I think it's more stable with heavier bands. I think it's, you know, if I were, if I were planning to hunt a lot of rabbit with slingshots, I think I'm choosing this one. If I want to get really good with a slingshot and be super accurate and just plinking and having a good time a lot, I think it's this one. Um, now I haven't tried to take any, you know, I haven't shot any ducks or anything like that with this, and it's probably illegal in my state anyway. i got to look into that. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think I can take doves with this. I don't think that I can legally take, you know, uh, uh, ducks or other birds with this. I, I, I doubt it. But I think it's pretty capable. Um, I don't think it would be that tough to, uh, if you get accurate enough, I don't think it would be that tough to take those kind of critters uh, with the appropriate ammo and the appropriate bands. Once you start getting into really heavy bands on this, though, it, this is, this is you know, easier to hold on to. It just the heavier the bands, the more it sucks into your hand. Uh, this is a lot easier to shoot a lot more. So, if I'm recommending one of these two to a beginner, to a novice, to somebody who wants to throw it in their bug out bag, somebody who just wants to learn about slingshots, guess what? Buy them both. Buy them both. They're, they're both like less than 40 bucks. Uh, buy both of these. Don't, don't, you know, don't try to choose between one or the other. Get this, if this is a first slingshot, you want it in a hurry, you're going to get this one in a hurry. He's going to send this right out to you. Great customer service. Any question you have, email them. They'll get right back to you. It's amazing. These folks don't communicate very much, but 
you know, they figure that if you're buying one of these, you know what the deal is. And, you know, they don't lie about it on their website. They say it's going to take at least four weeks. Uh, so, you know, you can be a spoiled consumer from eBay and Amazon and get uptight about how long it took to get you one of these and that they don't communicate very much, if at all. Uh, or you can be patient and get a really good slingshot for heavy bands. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Buy this one to get you started and buy this one at the same time so that you've got plenty of time to get started and start understanding a modern set of forks uh, while you wait for this one to show up. And shoot them both. Enjoy them both. Yeah, it's not a huge investment. Okay, that's it for this topic for today. Um, if you thought this content was interesting and useful, talking about a couple of very popular slingshots from a novice point of view, please give me a thumbs up down there. That helps my channel out quite a bit. Um, if this information was, you know, interesting to you because you're thinking about slingshots and things like that. I may have a couple of videos coming up in the future that might also interest you. I'm, I'm thinking about doing a clay ball video. Uh, I've kind of got that figured out, making clay balls. And I'm also thinking about doing a, uh, a lead casting video. Um, I've been casting bullets for years and years and there isn't a lot of difference or really any difference between doing that and doing round balls. Uh, so I've got a, I've got a uh, 38 caliber and a 44 caliber uh, uh, mold on order. They ought to be here any time. So I might do a, a casting ammo video in the future so if that sort of thing might interest you hit that subscribe button you know come back and watch those videos when they come up I'd, I'd like to have you back okay that's it I hope this information was useful to you and I hope this was at least a little bit entertaining really what I hope is that the rest of your day goes really really well bye bye now